For many years now, the Arca Blast More has been an absolute fan favorite. Just take 2023 as an example where the Tenant was one of the most used primary weapons in the game. But does it still have the chops to go toe to toe with the best in the game? Hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're going to be revisiting the Tenant Arca Plasmore. As per the usual, I'm going to have an introductory level setup and an end game setup. Bear in mind though that my builds and guides always take that new player friendly tone, simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, you can either skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Tenet Arca Plasmo. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. For that, just a couple of our regular free shots. The Tenant Arca Plasmore is in essence the regular Plasmore, and being a Tenant weapon means that you're getting extra stats, but more importantly, I need to choose a progenitor, the bonus element I'm gonna be getting on my Plasmore. When you make that decision, keep in mind that you already have base radiation on the weapon. So, what progenitor am I choosing? Heat or Toxin? Both are a fantastic idea. In terms of gameplay, the Tenant Arca Plasmore plays the same way except this one has bouncy projectiles, which means fantastic trick shots, which means you can fire around corners. And as you can see, it's got that effect that the projectile seems to be getting thicker, larger, bigger as it goes. And as with the regular Plasmore, you're getting yourself infinite body punch through. When it hits a surface, it's gonna be bouncing off of it, so you can do something like hit a target once as the projectile goes and hit it again when it comes back. It's absolutely phenomenal when it comes to tight corridors. When it comes to open worlds, well, not so much. And keep in mind, projectile flight speed will be increasing the distance that projectile will be traveling, because by default, it's not really all that much. When it comes to the usability of the weapon, what can I tell you? It's a semi-automatic weapon, and should you go for a headshot? The answer is still yes. While you may not have a headshot multiplier, so you're not getting that bonus damage, if you want to proc headshot effects, for example, specific arcanes, you still got to go for headshots. And it's best you kind of form your hand to just simply go for headshots, since most weapons in Warframe do benefit from getting that headshot. Careful with this one, however. You saw how I missed a couple of headshots there? Because again, the projectile seems to be getting thicker, bigger as it goes. But in actuality, right now you're looking at that. Dude, that should make contact with its head, and it's not. So bear that one in mind. The reload on this one is not fantastic, especially considering the magazine size of 10. So there are two major issues when it comes to usability. One, the fire rate, which is not fantastic. Two, the reload. And I'm just going to pretend that I don't see the low magazine size. As for the ammo reserve, considering how often you fire this one, it should be all good. Unless you gauss. And in which case, that's your problem now, isn't it? Let's have a closer look at stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. Accuracy, we don't care. Trick shots, not necessarily going for headshots. It can bounce however it wants to. In fact, if you actually... Let me show you this, come on. I didn't have this scripted, but if you put on all the multi-shot, and then you get yourself a little bit of negative accuracy, it actually makes for quite the cool experience. Vicious in her spread. 60% spread, so essentially that nukes your... Uh, accuracy which we don't care on a weapon such as this look at this look at that <laughs> essentially you're getting yourself projectiles flying everywhere and if you hit like the center of a corner an edge you can get projectiles flying in multiple directions ammo max is 40 ammo pickup is 15 which normally for most users is gonna be fine unless of course like i said you go so you wisp in which case you're having a whole lot of fun but you're also creating ammo issues fall off between 18 and 36 meters honestly by default the start of the fall off at 18 meters from your target is more than plenty. But of course, you can simply fatal acceleration, send that to 25 as a base. So that fall off starts at 25.2. Honestly, you don't really need anything more than fatal acceleration. But we got galvanized acceleration, which is so much better. So you see, the actual travel length doesn't matter because you will get plenty as long as you have the mods. Fire rate of 1, which is abysmal. Magazine of 10, which isn't fantastic, but still better than the normal one. Noise alarming because side fires this big it's weird because the weapon actually sounds like a plunger when you fire i digress reload at three seconds which again is a bit small riven disposition of nada only one out of five because this is a very popular weapon because this is a fun weapon it may not be the most powerful in the world but it's still hella fun and it's still my favorite weapon of warframe so 
Truth be told, you can't really trust my opinion because I am hella biased. Critical chance at 22%, which is not fantastic, and a 2x critical multiplier, which is basically average for critical weapons. Status chance high at 34%? Not really. Not if you take into account how many projectiles you put into your target. Not if you take into account how many damage instances you generate per second. So the status chance at 34% may seem big, but it's actually quite small. That's what she... Not important, heat damage and radiation. Radiation you're gonna be getting by default and I got a heat progenitor on this one. Again, you can switch to something like electricity or my recommendation still go for toxin. Jump into actions, plug in that auto king catalyst if you want the maximum mod capacity. You see mine has 80 out of 80, what gives? Now normally when you get the weapon, it starts off at 30 out of 30. But if you format the weapon five times and if you want the absolute most mastery points you want out of it, you're gonna have to format it five times. Every time you form up, you add another two. And when you plug in the Arakin Catalyst, which will be doubling that mod capacity, you go to a maximum of 80, which is insane. It works the same with Kuva weapons and the Parasises as well. You also got Valence Fusion here because this is again a tenant weapon and you have the same thing with the Kuva weapons as well. Essentially, this is what you use when you try to manipulate the element of your weapon. Let's say, for example, you didn't know, dude, I didn't know what I was doing. I got a Radiation Plasma and now I want to change to something else. Simply farm another Plasma with the element that you want, then you're going to be able to use Valence Fusion, combine the two and get the element of your choosing. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Now my weapon has been formatted a total of five times, but for the weapon build I'm recommending you, you can get away with two to three format as a jumping off point. And speaking about a jumping off point, let's start with an introductory level setup. Damage to twin blank multi shot with health chamber, critical chance, critical damage for the use of critical deceleration and shrapnel shot. You see, when it comes to crit damage, I prefer shrapnel shot instead of blunder ravage. Obviously. 60% critical damage is not fantastic. 99% is obviously better. The problem with this one is on kill and while aiming, which you should be doing anyway out of reflex when it comes to Warframe. Unless, of course, you melee. If you melee, simply play on mobile, and as soon as you get close to enemies, it will automatically melee. No, I kid you not. For the time being, you will need an iOS device. It's coming to Android as well. Now, I know what you're gonna say, Lazar. You said that the fire rate is horrible and you're using critical deceleration. What the hell are you even thinking? Well, I, I can't resist. I must I must has the crit, especially considering that the base critical chance is only 22%. The difference is going in blunderbuss, and blunderbuss sucks. 90% critical chance is terrible, only 41.8, so go with critical deceleration. 260-60 mods on this puppy, Toxic Barrage, Frigid Blast, forming together, vital elemental combo, because I'm assuming that if you're more of a newer player, you don't have a secondary primer or a Deriga or something of the sort. Even more critical chance on this one, because we do need it, we are going to be using Hunter Munitions with Laser Sight. Keep in mind that Laser Sight is mostly an optional mod. I still find it to be the smartest way when it comes to the Tenant Arca Plasma, again, as a base build. But you can swap this one off for more multi-shot with Vigilante Armaments or whatever else you want. It's not gonna make a humongous difference. Laser Sight will get you more slashes. Fatal Acceleration so I can get myself that fantastic projectile. No buffs, nothing whatsoever, and we're gonna be testing as a base on level 100 corrupted heavy goons. Make sure you use that infinite body punch and go for a headshot. Hold on. Headshots? I thought you said that the weapon doesn't have a headshot multiplier. Why am I even bothering? That's true, but I also said that there are certain effects that proc off a headshot. For example, in our case, we are using laser sight. It's very simple to track in the upper right portion of the screen. And laser sight will only proc off a headshot, so if you want that extra crit, definitely go for a headshot. As for the performance of the weapon, in my opinion, it absolutely shreds for its level. Now, this will conclude the new player portion of the guide. Treat this build as a jumping off point. But let's say you're a veteran. Dude, I got all the mods, I got the resources, how do I max out this weapon? In that case, you should be looking at something like this. Now, keep in mind, this is a bit more roundabout. You still got that hunter munitions, of course, we're going to Prime Ravage, Galvanize Hell, Galvanize Savvy. Yes, you must use Galvanize Savvy on this one. Prime Charge Shell, still Critical Deceleration and Toxic Barrage together with Shotgun Barrage. You can use the normal one if you don't want the ammo gun for 5%. Uh, minus fire rate, I get that 45% revive speed, which for my teammates at times it is definitely fantastic. I'm also going to be using Shotgun Vendetta on this one. 180% multi-shot and 75% reload speed, which helps with that blasted free second reload. Now this build is catered to the brand of faction, the Murmur. And tell me, what are the Murmur vulnerable to? I know, corrosive and radiation, which is exactly what this weapon delivers. Put a side of heat as well, which is absolutely fantastic. But you see, my friends, there's something that's kind of missing. Tell me, what 
don't I have on this one? I know you're not using a faction mod. Now you should be using a faction mod if you want the absolute most amount of damage. And it can go instead of the increased fire rate from Amalgam Barrage. But we're going to be testing on a mixture of factions. So it's not really going to work with any one mod. And keep in mind that that faction modifier is dead versus Acolytes. It doesn't do anything. I don't have a whole lot of flat damage on this one. So why not go for Prime Point Blank? Instead of this one, what I'm going to be going for is getting my flat damage from an Arcane. Not Shotgun Vendetta. Granted, you can replace this one with Merciless and you still get that reload speed of 30%. Though 75% is a whole lot better and I do prefer the multi-shot. I'm going to be getting most of my flat damage from Arcane Rage. And a bit more critical chance as well. Because even with Critical Deceleration, and yes, I could showcase it with a Riven. But I'm aware most of you don't have a Riven, which is worth slotting. We're just going to do an unriven build. 66%. Not enough. Terrible, horrible. I don't like it. But if you're going to be using Arcane Adventure as well, that's another 45%. So we're going over 110. So for Arcane's Arcane Rage and Arcane Avenger. But hold on there. Hold on. You still don't have Vital and you're doing a whole lot of slashes into your targets. That's true. For that, we're going to be using the best primer in the game. Yes, my friends, we're talking about the Diriga. And if you still don't know, the actually updated some of these companions to be legitimately useful link the cards and all for more information on that for the time being the deriga is the best primer in the game use this build as a jumping off point make sure you get the hellstrom from fortuna and build it like this if you want to prime with viral if you want to prime with something else and maybe proc a specific arcane well i trust you're smart enough to adapt the build now we're not going to be shooting the same targets because that would be kind of pointless. We're going to pump it up to level 180, enable the Steel Path modifiers, and we're going to be adding some of the Murmur as well since this is the latest and greatest faction. If I have a little bit of those Rogue Colorvin, these are Necromex, so they are vulnerable to Corrosive, and the Hollowed Vein, which can be a very tough target. Keep in mind that the Hollowed Vein is actually tough when it goes into its brrrr stance, when it casts that AoE thing around it. Yeah, you should just back away from it, wait for it to channel its frontal beam, and then you can easily knock it to the ground, no problem whatsoever. Starting off with the juicy Corrupted Heavy Goons, because I can actually proc my Arcanes against these. You see, the damage is absolutely hilarious, make sure you keep a track of your buffs in the upper right portion of the screen. The problem with spawning these stupid Colurvin, not only are they essentially very easy to kill, but I can proc anything off of them, not even Arcane Rage procs off of them. You see, I got the Hollow Vein over there, I'm gonna hit him right in the face, take a look at the damage values, you can actually get up to 2 million easily on them if you don't have, or better said, if they don't have that, that's what they're doing right now, you see that? That is their move when they're getting insane amounts of damage mitigation. Beautiful, glorious damage without any issue whatsoever. It's the Plasmor. It is what it is. It's a fantastic weapon that I highly recommend to just about anybody. As long as you understand, this is not the most powerful weapon in the game, nor does it need it to be. But take a look what it did to that Hollowed Vein. Take a look at the, the actual damage values on that target. That was 1.2 million, 1.3 something of the sort now of course i know what you're gonna say hold on dude these are standing still target well they're not standing still but it's the simulacrum even though that argument doesn't really hold a whole lot of water nowadays because you do have those steel path modifiers enabled how about we take this to a survival in the brand new tile set? We're going to be using Papa Revenant because Papa Revenant won't do anything to boost the damage of my weapon. But I do love how the Archoplasmor looks in the dark, especially if you got the bloom turned up and if you got the skin for it. Of course, my friends, I'm going to be able to, I mean, what can I tell you? It is, there's really nothing I can tell you about base level steel path and this is base level steel path you're gonna absolutely murder everything and anything that stands before you in brutal fashion it is the glory of the Arca Plasmor now in tenant flavor again my opinion is biased I love this weapon it's my favorite weapon in the entire game but in my 2.8 mil Bear in mind, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the most powerful weapon. Far from it, definitely. You want to see the top 10 weapons in Warframe? I'll link them to you in the cards later, so you don't click off this video, hopefully. But as you can see, if you're looking for performance, there's really no need necessarily to go for Incarnate weapons. If Incarnate weapons are not your style, then you can go for something like this. Look at that. Beautiful. Glorious. Fantastic. And I may be repeating myself because there's really nothing else I can show you. I can stay here for a while and have no issue. Hold on, is this a level cap weapon? Well, no, not, I wouldn't use it at level cap per se. But let's be honest here. How many of you actually consistently do that? Because there's very little point outside of Epin. And don't get me wrong, I respect the size of my Epin. But still, my friends, for most people, and I'm talking the 99%, 
This is more than plenty for essentially anything and everything that Warframe can throw at you. Come to Papa, come on. Here it is. Open fire! Easy, no problem whatsoever in completely annihilating the Acolyte. Now before I go, a moment of silence for the ever so lovely Lady Mirage Prime. We're gonna do one more section of Warframe buffs like the old days when we used to use Mirage, simply because she is still the most powerful weapon buffer frame in the game. However, that will not be the case come the next update. Of course, I'm talking about Dante Unbound, the big update that is supposed to launch in March 2024. In a move that I can only really describe as a tone-deaf bait and switch, the developer announced that they are finally listening to us when it comes to Mirage and her free ability Eclipse. Eclipse is fantastic. It is the most powerful weapon buffing ability in the game, making Mirage the most powerful weapon buffer frame. No more with Dante Unbound. Now they did offer us an option in the sense that if we give you a toggle on Eclipse, we're gonna have to nerf it, but we were under the impression that the helmet ability would have been nerfed. So everybody jumped on the forums and said, hey, give us a toggle, give us a toggle. Unfortunately for us, what they turned around and did and let us know yesterday in the dev stream is that they will be changing the way Eclipse works. No longer will it be multiplicative at the end. Instead, it's gonna work like Vexar. Now, Vex Armor basically works like your flat damage increases, for example, Serration, which means this is the death of the best weapon buffer frame in the game and the death of Eclipse. If you've been using Eclipse up until Dante Unbound as a helmet ability, feel free to swap it out for something like Roar or maybe even Sara's Whisper if weapon damage is your primary focus. So that's pretty much it. Unfortunately, they are changing Eclipse in a terrible way. Instead of essentially giving the community what it wanted for years and years, they instead are destroying basically this ability. So there you go. We still have a little bit of time to enjoy Eclipse as it is now. A quirky, gimmicky, not overly reliable, but when it works, mwah, mwah, that fantastic damage. Come Dante Unbound, all of this is Kaputski. So, one more time, Lady Mirage Prime, for all time's sakes, beautiful, fantastic. Oh yeah, <laughs> 7 mil, easy. <laughs> this is what they're ruining, essentially, with the changes to Eclipse. You will no longer have access to this unbelievable power. And I know Mirage doesn't survive very well in the high levels, and I know she's not the most optimal frames. This was not about optimal. This was not about level cap or that kind of nonsense. This was just about pure fun. Dear Digital Extremes, please reconsider. As always, my name is Malazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, let me know in the comment section down below. As for the Tenentarka Plasmore, did I recommend it enough by this point? Get the Tenentarka Plasmore, enjoy it my friends, and have fun. You can also catch me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love what we do, consider supporting us via Patreon. There's gonna be a link in the upper right portion of the screen right about now. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.